out supering today and uh, I just wanted to take this moment to give myself a bit of a break but also to show you um, and answer the question I get asked by a lot of people. Um, I know a lot of people in the UK have had a lot less of it this year but I, the question I get is how much canola or oilseed rape do you have around you? Well, I reply, well, we don't have to move our hives anywhere because it's all over the place. So let me give you some idea. I'm just gonna walk up to the edge of this field and we're at the top of a valley here. This is a field of wheat, but I'm just in now. It's only very short. But if I show you there, that's my nearest one. I've just driven past it on the way down here. So I'm gonna pan around now and that's the valley. You've got one there. You've got another one there. And I know there's another one in the distance there. So that's three big fields you can see. In fact, there's four. There's one, two, three, and I know there's another one just down there where my bees are coming from. But there's just so much food around right now. It's, it's always the same every year. We go from the sublime to the ridiculous. In the valley there, you can just see, I think that one, that tree just that I'm pointing to now, that's um, goat willow, what we call sol marceau in French. And all around there as well is wild cherries and the oaks are also coming into flower. So you get this time where there's just so much food. But the problem we've had right now is we've got really, really cold nights. I'm just going to turn around so you can see the intensity of the one up there. It's absolutely incredible. Um, when you drive past, I've got that smell today. Um, as I was saying, the nights are really, really cold. We're down to minus one, minus two, which is cold for us, but it's only because the sky is so clear and we've had low pressure and a lot of rain. We've had over 50 mil of rain in the last four days. So I'm, I am getting into apiaries, luckily, because it was very dry before. So the, the water has gone in and has kind of not run off too much, but it stopped. And now the temperatures are going to slowly creep up and the, um, the weather is going to get a little bit better. But we have got, an, you can probably hear a slight northeasterly wind and it's going to be that nagging wind, I think. But I'm putting supers on. We always try and hold off supering till our wild cherries start to come into flower. And that gives us the maximum time with the rape seed oil or canola in full, in full flower, as well as um, the wild cherries and all the apples and everything else. So it, we, we get about three to four weeks of flow and that flow gives us enough time to get the honey on into the supers via the bees, obviously. The colonies are usually a little bit stronger by them, which they certainly are this year. They're really strong. And then it gives us time to get the honey cured and get it off before it crystallizes or um, goes basically rock solid. And if your colony swarms, the classic problem is the colony gets absolutely monstrous. Uh, it'll swarm just at the peak of the flow, well, as it rounds off, because there's so much food in the, in the colony, it gets congestion. And then um, you get cold nights. So what's left in the colony shrinks down and you open the, the, the top of the, the first super and all you see is white a white block because basically it crystallizes into this really incredibly hard white uh, block, which you can do nothing with apart from you can heat it up if you've got a facility and if you've got a warming room, fantastic. You can put all your supers with crystallized honey in. But the whole idea is we don't have that. The whole idea is we uh, work on this time scale that gives us about four weeks from start to finish. So we're looking to harvest on the end of the fourth week and that will give us uh, hopefully the ability to extract all the honey. If we lose a little bit in the frames, we don't mind, but it's a pain because you have to load the extract carefully for us. Um, and you've got a balanced extractor when you're trying to extract the honey, because obviously an unbalanced extractor with some, some um, uh, crystallized and non-crystallized means the, the extractor tries to go for a walk around the room and it stresses everything and it's a right pain. Um, it's all going to be really busy for now because I yesterday, because I've been going around all, all these apiaries and they're all so strong, I've been taking out frames of honey and taking out frames of brood and giving them colonies that are a little bit um, weaker to try and balance them up and I've been removing some of this honey because I mean, it's, we've just got like, you can probably see slabs of the stuff here. It's absolutely loads of it. There's a few little bees that will just fly back. But this is the kind of thing we've got. You, you've got to make room in your colonies because 
you've got to keep those wax builders building and you've got to keep everything going. So these are my supers I'm putting on. I've already put on all the supers that needed rebuilding and I'm now back to using eight, which is great. So it means that these bees will fill these up with honey, but I, you can just see the amount of bees flying to these uh, hives. It's just absolutely amazing. Um, the flow is, when the sun comes out, the flow is strong. But everything is good. So that's the whole thing now is we've got to finish supering the first round which i should finish tomorrow um i've been i did it all day yesterday finished at um eight o'clock last night when the sun went down um i got about 45 supers on yesterday so that's one per colony no swarms yesterday but i've just found one today but it was an old queen and i found where it came from and i left one queen cell so maybe it will actually will be a blessing in disguise that i get an extra colony out of it and it's nice and early in the year so fingers crossed and i caught the swarm um, it was a fair size and I put a super on the box. So I'm hoping that it will uh, all be good and uh, it will give me summer honey. But we shall see. I mean, there's a long way to go. It's, we're right at the start of the, of the first flow. It's everything to play for. This is when you get unusual things. We can, we've got cold weather, um, but the bees are flying when they can and all is good. I mean, you can't, I can't complain. Um, we've come through the winter reasonably well, looking at 20% losses. So I can work with that and uh, it's, I'm already exhausted, but <laughs> that's what it is. You know, this week, once this week's out of the way, we should be a little bit quieter for a week or two. I'm gonna, but I'm going to keep going back to my colonies every week and checking every single one because it's the only way. And I've seen there's a, there's a lot of empty cups with no eggs and I've decompressurized all my colonies. I'm doing that now by going around, opening up the ventilated base, making sure that is is open so we've got plenty of air going in so the brood nest never gets so hot that's obviously one of the reasons why you get swarming is that if you can't ventilate that base a little bit with mesh floors which we have on these daydon hives i'm sure that ventilation in the summer may contribute towards a little bit of swarm control so that's what I'm doing in there every April, making sure that all the bases are nice and open. I'm decompressing by taking out frames of honey and they're all, I've got over a nearly, well, I think it must be over a hundred frames now stored. They've taken out every single colony's given up one or two um, or, or thereabouts. Some are just frames, but I, I've given them space. That's the thing. That's what I've been do, doing in my trips around. So I'm, and now I'm supering. So even if the colony's full, I'm still checking for queen cells and I'm still removing a frame of honey if the colony's still full and I'm giving them a super. So with that combined, I'm hopefully I'm gonna reduce my swarming problems. Um, and obviously the, one of the best ways to stop swarming is to requeen loads of your colonies, which I'm doing this year as well. So it looks like I'll be doing a lot of mini plus this year. All my mini plus at home are all doing really well. They're all onto their fourth and some their fifth body. So, uh, that's 24, 28 frames already being built or being built. Every seems to me every time I look at them, they're onto the next body. So that's all good. So, I've, so yesterday I was harvesting from here and I stocked my cell builder. Uh, I had a nice colony that was really strong. That's gone into a 10 frame hive. And on top of it, I gave 10 frames of brood. I harvested from, from uh, an apiary yesterday and it was no problem at all finding 10 frames of brood and when you're only taking one frame of brood from the from the build up in the spring of what of, of, of each colony there's absolutely nothing for the bees to cope with so um that was good a good use of resources so overall it's a good start we're only at the very beginning there's a long way to go but it's looking good we just need at least a week or two of good weather to have some honey put in those supers but they will put honey in those supers anyway they'll be clearing out their brood nest a little bit and they do move it up i know people say to me oh they put a super on and it's filled within three or four days even though the weather's been bad that's not usually them foraging so much it's the fact the bees have got space above and they like to try and empty out that brood nest if they can they don't all do it but some do and that's this is where you've got to beware so we'll probably come to a second supering next week and the second supering we usually get between two and three supers in a good year so we don't want to give the bees too much space but we want to give them enough space so that when it does crank up if the weather goes good and the flow is excellent which it really is right now the next week and after two weeks that we're in full flow We've had loads of rain and everything's soaking. If we get that weather, you just want to have those bees going, throwing that honey up in those, in those supers. 
building that new comb with all those nice new wax builders and really firing that firing that honey in there and, and keeping it in that super and and you know the numbers of bees are there now so there's there's no reason why if we get some fairly good weather i don't want it too hot i mean obviously i'm being picky here what would be the ideal conditions well about 18 degrees light winds and and calm you know um that's what everybody would want but in reality there's going to be a nagging wind for the next three or four days but you know let's just let's just live in hope and be positive and at the moment it's all looking good so um we'll do what we can onwards and upwards it was just to say that to show you the amount of rape we have is just unbelievable here you know so um but anyway whatever you're doing be well i hope you have a good week and i hope your bees behave themselves mine are doing good so i'm not complaining onwards and upwards take care speak to you again soon bye bye